Yeah, receiving the award was a great surprise and a great pleasure, particularly because Pathoplexus was fairly young. We only launched in August of 2024. And so finding out that we had already made such an impact to be recognized for trying to make science more open was really exhilarating. I'm Emma Hodcroft. I'm an assistant professor at the Swiss Tropical and Public Health Institute and University of Basel, and I'm president of Pathoplexus. And my name is Haronsen. I'm a scientific software engineer at ETH Zurich and as a treasurer of Pathoplexus. Pathoplexus is like a digital library for people, for scientists to store and access genetic information of viruses. And the goal of our project is to really make it easy and as easy as possible for people to find those data and also to reduce barriers to share those data. And these data are very important for scientists to understand the evolution of viruses and track their spread and also for the industry to develop vaccines and treatments. So one of the things that we really wanted to do with Pathoplexus was come up with innovative ways to encourage people to share data. In the scientific community, when you sequence viruses or sequence pathogens, you usually publish on that data. And historically, people often wait until that publication before they release the data because they don't want anyone else to use it beforehand. One of the things we came up with in Pathoplexus is the idea that you can share that data quickly for others to use for public health or for research, but that you can't publish on that data without talking to the person that generated it. This means that scientists can share that data for public good, but still know that they'll be able to get the credit in a publication later. So for us, the, one of the biggest or uh, most important tasks was to find a big group of collaborators and a big group of community and to ensure and to align with them on how this database and how this platform should be run and how all the governance should look like and as Emma said how exactly we want to define the rules on how the data may be used and we are so our team consists of people coming from 10 different countries so it has definitely been taking a lot of time and effort to bring everyone together One of the things with Pathoplexus is that we hope that this can play a role if we face novel pathogens in the future by encouraging people to share those sequences as quickly as possible. And actually, just in the last few months, we've been able to demonstrate some of that impact. The first Ebola Sudan sequence from the recent outbreak in Uganda was shared on Pathoplexus. And we also had a case recently of a MPOX sample that was sequenced and made available on Pathoplexus all in one day. So this really highlights how the speed of response for new or existing pathogens can make a big difference in how we respond. And we hope that Pathoplexus can be part of making that easier in the future. I think we all hope that it will become really normal for scientists to share the data openly and rapidly and that they all will be also um, credited and cited appropriately. I think the you know, open research data really is a chance to accelerate collaborations and um, the speed of science for, for everyone if we can make sure that the data generation itself is accounted or valued as an important yeah, contribution to science. I think one of the things that open data really highlights is the fact that none of us work in a vacuum. And when you can help to make open data more available, encourage people to share and use that data, it highlights that all of us need to work together to solve the problems that are facing humanity, whether that's another pandemic or climate change or economic difficulties. And I think that developing, hopefully, platforms like Pathoplexus can help to show that all parts of that data generation and data sharing are important and highlighting that contribution and encouraging people to work together to solve those problems.